Hello everyone and welcome to Southend Aviation. My name is Sean, I'm the creator and videographer of the channel. It's my pleasure to bring to you a brand new series of videos on the channel, a set of POV style videos showcasing the days I attended the Royal International Air Tattoo 2022. We start on Friday 15th of July at Flyby Camping where you can either see some of the show from their site or leave your car there and walk over to the popular Eastern Perimeter Road. Myself and Ramp Orion chose the latter. But before we show you any more shots from Riyadh, we'll take you over to Kemble. Kemble is a 20 minute car journey from Fairford and as the Friday show was only a half day, we decided it would be worth the trip. Perhaps Kemble's biggest attraction is the BA Negus 747 which last flew in October of 2020. There is also a cafe here, however we arrived just as they were closing. This obviously didn't take away from the fact we were stood right next to the famous jumbo jet. That's enough from me for now, enjoy the photo shoot, and uh, do excuse my heavy breathing, hay fever is a bitch. Beautiful. Uh, I think these ones are slightly bigger. I'm pretty sure they're slightly bigger on the 74, yeah. But only by like a couple of inches diameter. Yeah, I sat here thinking, like, is she on the 74? It doesn't look that big. I kind of want to get the exhaust shot. Yeah, you know, didn't you? We should see the exhaust on these. They've got a pretty weird looking mixer, haven't they? They're not really, they just look fucking awesome. Exactly what I mean. Oh yeah, that does look cool. <laughs> this is where you want that F4. Ideally, like a nice F28 lens would have been good there. Yeah. It's just... It, oh. I know, I know I've seen the 74s like massive, it was the biggest plane, biggest passenger plane for years, but you forget how big they actually are. I'm not, hmm. Got up to an A380, a little bit bigger, I'm not going to lie, the A380 is big, but, yeah, but I love the exhaust of them. They just it is like, cool, isn't it? It's probably what causes that sort of the whistling noise, noise. but yeah. then, then again the PW4000s do it as well, look and look they're also very... She has got quite a decent. Those look very cool. Nice towel shot there. So glad I came here. Yeah. I'm not sure if I've worked on that one. <laughs> I wonder if the one that I flew is here. I flew on TTL, I think. I'm not sure if they're in for storage or not, but there are a few Cat 320s around here. But they're all the CEOs. I think they're all eventually here for scrap. They're definitely all the CEOs. Uh... Yeah, you wouldn't see any Neos here, no chance. Wouldn't you love to just have like a 747 tower in your garden? <laughs> Look at these 320s. Well, 319s, aren't they? So this, ladies and gentlemen, is where aircraft go to retire and slowly but surely die this is a tap 319 is it cstng i think it was tlg it does give you a uh, perception of how much little bypass those engines have well the cfms yeah uh, not a lot really and I think it's like five, six on the CFM, but the DIAs is even less. Is that Air Mauritius? That's come a long way. Yeah. 
Caution, beware of jet blast. Oh man, could you imagine engine runs like here? Oh yeah. To be fair, that that air Mauritius one, it doesn't look too bad. It's still, it's still got an entire engine in it. And to be fair, it has been cleaned up. It doesn't look like dirty or anything. The viewers probably know more than me. Is anything happening with that Air Mauritius? It's got a new registration as well, VQ. Is that Russian? I'm not too sure. Forward? I think Ryan's getting a lovely shot of me looking at airplanes. Uh, I doubt it. No offence. <laughs> I do want to uh, drive back ground where we came from later because they did have the 727 over there. Yeah, I'll see if I can try and go anywhere I can get that hedge. That's, that's probably what we'll do. We'll whip out the lever at some point and you can see over the hedge. Uh, yeah. A new lens, ladies and gentlemen. New lens, who this? Uh, Sony 200 to 600. I'm going to get that shot of that. kind of want to do a nice shot where you put that small little piston cone in there. And then so I believe that these 747s over here are, I think one's a 200 and the other two are 300s. Gulfstream up there. In the sky. I love using that response. <laughs> no, it probably isn't, no. Not at all. One thing to notice with the Sim 4 is the wing tips. They rake back down. I do like that. That does look very cool. What's this coming in? Piper? Just seen a pigeon on the uh, in the 319 wingtip. Get some shots of this Piper. I can hear your lens struggling. <laughs> get a shot of the gear. I just want to get like shots of like everything. Because God knows when I'm going to come here again. Oh, I've got an idea. That plane, whatever it is, sounds fucking horrendous. Tell you what, that engine shot, add some clarity, that'll look beautiful. Um, the wheel chocks in the fan blades. I get why they do it, it's to stop it from windmilling, but and the thing is you can't really clone them out, or at least not easily. What an aircraft. If you just move like just a touch this way, yeah, that should be all right. Cool.
spay. It's the same engine that was in the uh, BAC 111. Uh, I think the Nimrods had them as well. And now let's get to the shots from Fairford. We arrived fairly late into the display, so we did unfortunately miss the 727 and P8 flypasts. Nevertheless, it was a good show with some superb close arrivals and of course the arrival of the E4B. Also, my personal rear static display highlights the Swedish Air Force historic flight. They really are silent when they come in though, aren't they? Yeah, that's, that's why it's snuck off on us. Fucking hell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus.
comes up. Have a look and see where these Swedes are. Fighters. Three. What the fuck are they? Yeah, it is. it is. It is. Oh shit, I didn't realise they were here so soon. Uh, where's E4B? Way out. Not coming in. They are. Oh, I don't know what lens to use. You should 200 to 600 now. No, I think I'm going to go to 70 to 350. Think they're boring? Yeah. <laughs> well, not that one. I like that one. What one? The last one, which just went over. The vegan. Yeah. These are cool as well. The dragon. Just because it's got reverse thrust. And it's a JT8D. 727 engine. DC9. Yeah. Again. I'm going to switch lenses. Mate, who needs landing gear? Jesus. Should I do one times? Uh, you, you do you. Okay. Wow.
Mate, that sounded incredible. Welcome back everybody. To finish these POV videos off, I'm going to quickly talk through how I edit my photos. In each video, I'll choose one photo from the day and demonstrate how I edit them. I just want to say there is no wrong or right way to edit. This is of course all down to personal preference. The photo I've chosen for today is this engine shot from the BA747. So we're going to start the edit with just some basic corrections like sorting out your horizon, the crop, highlight shadows, etc. You know, anything that you do in any, you know, basic photo editing. And then the reason I selected this photo, or at least show you how to edit this photo, how I edit at least, is because I knew that I'd be using the brush tool a lot. And the brush tool is a really useful tool in Lightroom because it allows you to edit certain parts of the image which is called editing locally, which is where you only select a certain part of the image and edit that. And a big go-to for me is uh, getting those fan blades and really adjusting the clarity in those and you know do some desaturating. Play around with the blacks and the whites as well, just to add a bit more depth in the fan blades and whatnot. And then another thing I do, like you can see here, is I'm uh, currently masking the sky. Um, pretty much if any of my photos have a cloud in the shot or like you know quite a moody sky chances are I'm going to dehaze it dehaze is definitely my favorite slider in all of Lightroom uh, followed closely by the shadows and then probably clarity as well they're my top three favorite sliders in Lightroom uh, one tip when using the brush tool is that if you select auto mask it'll make your whole masking uh, journey so much easier uh, what that does is that if you have say a dark subject against a fairly white, you know, white out sky uh, and you only want to edit say the dark subject, um, if you select auto mask and you mask along, you mask across your dark subject, it will only mask that dark subject. So if you go along and you accidentally go over and you, you know, you mask the white, it won't actually mask it if that makes sense. I haven't really chosen the best image because the the colour of the wing and the colour of the sky is fairly similar so you know Lightroom can't really process it very well. You can sort of see it there on the underneath of the wing and the sky how it's not uh, it's not painting over the uh, the wing um, but that's a very useful tool. Uh, it doesn't work you know to a T obviously if like I say you know the colour of the wing can be very similar to a sky so you know Lightroom can't really process the difference between the two but it's a uh, it's a very useful tool and it will make your uh, masking journey a hell of a lot easier obviously this edit is sped up I think this edit took about 15 minutes to do um, and I wasn't gonna you know blabber on for 15 minutes telling you each and every little thing that I do um, it's fairly self-explanatory uh, you know masking can take a very long time it can certainly take up the majority of your time when editing a photo the most I've ever spent on a photo is about 40 minutes, 45 minutes, and that was, you know, a good, you know, half hour that was all just masking. Um, and it's totally worth doing because it's, you know, being very careful with your masking because you can, you can get really good results with it. And now for the magic, obviously, this is where we get to you know dehaze the sky and it's something that I love doing like I say you know bringing the highlights down as well to just reveal a little bit more detail in the clouds um, bringing the temperature down just to make it a bit more blue uh, clarity again for more detail in the clouds and whatnot and it's really just experiment with all the sliders and see what works for you like I said like I said at the beginning there's no wrong or right way to edit a photo it really is just personal preference you hate yourself I'm always you know in the luminance, the luminance will basically uh, change uh, the brightness of each color. Saturation obviously does the saturation of each color. Hue, I don't really touch that. Uh, you can ignore that for now. Uh, another thing is you can see under the wing that it's got this yellow sort of reflection in it, and that's obviously the grass. I get rid of that. Absolutely hate it. For example, if there's a, you know, I can see that there's green underneath the wing. I'll get rid of that. I think it looks horrible so just desaturate it uh, it looks so much better to me again personal preference uh, and then you know to finish off the edit it's just some basic lens corrections you know removing chromatic aberration or you know adding or getting rid of some vignette whatever you want 
and then like you can see what I'm doing here I'm just going back with the engines changing them slightly um, it's always good to just take a step back and have a good look at your photo and uh, wonder if there's anything else you can do to it or if you've overdone something and then there you go before and after of the image it's uh, it definitely shows and I do apologize I know I did blabber on quite a bit there I was talking uh, probably a lot more than I needed to but I really wanted to just showcase every little you know sort of detail that I was doing without it being you know too boring or whatever probably didn't do a very good job at that but um, yeah so there it is there's my photo of the uh, Rolls Royce RB211s on the BA747 sat at Campbell. And to bring the video to a close, I'm going to show you a quick selection of photos from the day. Now, while I show you these photos, you will remember earlier in the video I said I would not recommend Sony's 200 to 600 mm lens. And well, unfortunately, the proof is in the pudding. Sadly, you can see how soft and misfocused a lot of these pictures are. I sent the lens back thinking mine was just faulty, after all I did get it second hand, but I've since learned that this is a common problem on Sony's 200-600, which has allegedly been fixed with a firmware update. However, I wasn't too keen on taking a risk with another Sony 200-600, and I've since opted for Sigma's 150-600. After testing that lens out briefly down at Southend Airport, I can see it's much sharper than the native Sony lens. That's definitely something to bear in mind for any Sony Alpha viewers watching. Before I go, I just want to say a big thank you to all those who watched till the end. I hope everyone enjoyed this new style of video for the channel. This is definitely something I want to do more and more of, providing, of course, that the viewers find it entertaining. Uh, you can expect to see more React PO videos in the coming days, along with a Farnborough video as well. As I leave you with these pictures from Riet, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.